Hey folks, I'm back again. Uh, it is time for another entry into the video card series. First thing I'd like to say up front, just in front of everything else, is I received this in the mail uh, not too long ago, just a couple days ago. Uh, it is a hard copy of the uh, MC68020 uh, CPU user's manual, which is super cool. I realized you could just, uh, you know, get a PDF online, but um, having a hard copy is really cool. There was just a guy on Reddit on, uh, I think Vintage Computing, who had a had a bookshelf full of old books that he was showing off, and this was on there, and I said, that's cool, and he said, here, have it. So, props to you, uh, guy whose real name I have no idea what it is. Anyway, so today, uh, you'll remember last time we worked on the MUX, which was relatively simple, because um, that was just, you know, uh, 16 down to 4, uh, is that a D multiplexer, technically? Anyway... Um, to get our output from our memory chip uh, down into the four bits that we're going to eventually use for video output. So today, uh, we're actually going to start testing... Ooh, sorry guys. This boy. This boy. This guy. <laughs> Here you go. This one. Um, these are the actual dual port SRAMs. My thought is, you know, because I just want to make sure they work and... Um, you know, test them out a little bit before I just start trying to run them at full speed and whatnot. Um, so I think I'm going to do a very similar thing to what I did with the SRAMs, just kind of solder them in there, get power run, and then I think I'm just gonna bust out most of the address and control pins to some headers, wire some of them out to a breadboard so that I can uh, feed data into the RAM on one side, and then the other side I will wire up to the demultiplexer multiplexer, whatever it is. Hopefully, you know, then I can toggle the multiplex bits and we should see exactly what I put into the RAM on the other side, coming out, going through the multiplexer and everything should be cool. So that is the hope. Let's uh, dig right in and start soldering this bad boy in. Okay, so speaking of hard copies, I just printed out the uh, actual hard copy data sheet for this chip. Um, won't be important yet, but uh, now I have the chip out of the socket so I can solder without worrying about burning things up for one. And then in a second, once I have uh, that socket in, I'm just going to tack all the pins down and then I am going to figure out what uh, the power pins are on here and get those wired up since I already have uh, the red and black wires are power run on this board. So let's start tacking that in. Okay, so we are all tacked in. Um, so that guy isn't going anywhere. My next step is to look at this guy. Look at the data sheet. And let's see if we can find the uh, footprint. Hey, there it is right there. So according to this, uh, we want to find all of the VCCs. Oh, my pen is dead. Right here. It's going to be surprising if there's really not... Oh, there's one here. And is that it? Oh, there's one. You were probably all staring at that. If it's even on screen, it is. Okay, so that's not bad. Three VCCs. So I will uh, run those first. It's always a pain in the butt, because you can see, I mean, these pins are so tight pitch-wise that when they get broken out into tenth of an inch spacing, um, you know, they get staggered like this. Um, and I can never remember the counting. So that, there's an arrow here that is supposed to be pointing to pin one, I think. Um, and then it goes around this way, and then, pff, yeah, you have to remember which one is pin one, and then how the counting goes, and then how it goes around the corner, and, um, it's pretty straightforward, but I never trust myself, so you may see a lot of counting coming up here. Well, all right, I'm going for it. Okay, so a quick pause. That one should have a pin in it. One of the pins got kind of crunched up in there, but... I think I might still be able to make contact with it. I'm gonna try soldering in a piece of wire, see if I can make contact through that hole. Do not recommend, but I am not desoldering this whole freaking thing, so we'll see how this goes.
Okay, it appears that um, I actually got away with that, hopefully. Okay, back to doing these VCCs. All right, that's all the power down. Um, it might not be the most beautiful thing anybody has ever seen, but it is, uh, you know, I'm not seeing any shorts yet, so that's good. Um, now I'm gonna do the grounds. You may say to me, you may say, Joe, um, shouldn't you put in some decoupling caps? And I probably will, but later on down the road. In fact, you'll see, I don't know if they ever really made any difference at the speeds I was running this thing at, but this is the 816 single board computer. And I did put some decoupling caps on here uh, after the fact. So um, I will probably do the same thing here, but for starters, we're gonna be running it at such low speed that I'm not gonna bother with that yet. All right, ground time. Okay, am I still shooting? I am still actually shooting. Cool, cool. All right, that's all of our ground done. Uh, if you want to know real time what that was like, and that is for, let me check that off, nine connections. Um, let me look at the clock. I don't know what time it is. Okay, so I started at like maybe 10.15 and now it's 10.55. So, you know, you're talking maybe 30 minutes. Now I just have to do the whole rest of it. Um, I think my next steps will be to um, firstly, I have to determine, you can see on here, maybe, um, it's kind of small. Um, so see how this says A8L? I believe they have the ports marked left and right. So you have L's here. Then if you look down here, or right here, like A0R. So I am going to make a note and have to make a determination which port, uh, left or right, is going to be uh, video side and which one is going to be bus side. So it looks like... Uh, Basically, this side of the chip is the right port, and this side of the chip is the left port. So, okay, how's that actually laid out on my chip? So that means this side, everything here over is left, and this side, everything here over is right. I guess that's my next step, is to take these, the left-hand I.O., which is just going to be output, really, um, and feed them into the MUX, because that's going to be my video data coming out of RAM and going into the MUX and out through. So. My video side is going to be L, and my CPU side is going to be R. Cool.
Okay, so that is all of the uh, data lines coming out from the left hand side, which is going to be my video side, uh, going out to the header. Looking at the clock, it's about uh, it's 11.36 now, so uh, about another 40 minutes to do those. That's not horrifying. That's the biggest thing with these projects is just uh, my soldering and whatnot takes forever. I've gotten good at it too. Like I've had to, you know, do this so much on the other project. Where's the video card too? Yeah, here we go. Like, look at those connections. That was, this is nothing in comparison. I guess the next step is um, there's all of these controls. I will also want to bust the address pins out. Looks like they go from uh, here to here and I will put them all on headers for now, for sure, because uh, whatever I'm going to use to drive this chip, you know, even if I'm just grounding or lifting these to power to set a fixed address for a while, um, you know, I'm going to need to adjust that and then be able to unplug my test harness. So we're going to bust out everything from here through here and just put it on a header. Maybe I'll start with the address stuff and then uh, do a separate header for the bus control. And then we're done with half the chip, so that's something. All right, let's hit it. Okay, amazingly, we are still rolling. Let's see, time check, it is now 12.27. Time for me to go to lunch and to my real job, but let's see how far we've gotten so far. So we got all of those address pins. Those are coming over here to this header, um, A0 through A13, 14 address pins. And then we've got our control signals from up here. Those are all coming down over here, which most of those are next to each other right here, except for the busy signal which is over here. So that is at least for uh, prototyping and testing purposes as as far as the build of this board and soldering and all that stuff. That I think is everything for the video side. Now obviously in the future this will be hooked up to the CPLD as well as this um, that will be driving you know the output. Obviously there is another video RAM that needs to go in here that will be wired up exactly the same way so we'll still take you know about the same what two and a half hours uh, to wire up. But yeah, now I just need to do the same thing on the other side. And then <laughs> I have to build some kind of uh, hardware to drive this sucker. Yeah, there will be a lot of flying wires when I go to eventually throw this on a prototyping board, but that's it for me for today, for me in the real world today. All right, jump cut. This may seem like exactly the same shot to you, or maybe only slightly different, but this is now 
uh, Wednesday, and I'm gonna sit down. I have a little time to try and uh, bust out a little bit more of this work. So I'm going to take all this stuff from the, uh, what'll be the CPU side, woo, and uh, bust that out to headers too. So I guess let's just get to it. Okay, progress check. Let me check those off. I have all of the CPU side video or uh, data lines busted out. So that's a good amount of progress. That's 16. Now I only have to do, uh, let's do the address lines and then um, I'll do these control lines. Okay, let's do some address lines. Okay, that's all the address lines, I think, and they look short-free. Yeah, not too bad. According to the YouTube video I'm watching right now, uh, I'm under an hour. All right, time to wire up the control signals, and I guess that's it for the day. All right, so I should probably cross those off, but that is all of the control lines. The only thing I have to do now, really, and, and then I'm done with this soldering, um, is this master slave signal. So I am going to just do one last segment of fast forwarding. I'm gonna look in the documentation to see what the heck this is and if I can safely ground it or tie it to power. Um, because I don't know what that does. Let's check it out.
Okay, so that's interesting. Um, I guess apparently this is for uh, cascading chips in parallel. So say you want to do 32 bits worth of uh, data, which isn't us here. You kind of cascade the busy signal from the slave into the parent, or rather the parent's busy signal drives the children. I'm not sure. Um, the thing is, I don't need to be super sure because uh, we're a master at all times. So that seems to make sense to me. So I'm just going to tie uh, master to VCC and kind of forget about it. And then I'm done for the day. Okay, my cat came in here. Hey buddy, come here. If you're gonna bother me, like bother me proper. I did catch a short in there. One of the pins was shorted to uh, VCC, so that's good. Um, and there goes the cat. <laughs> but, oh buddy. Yeah, I think that's it for the day. Now my next step is I just have to find every single freaking, uh, you know, female header I can and build up some uh, ribbon cables to shove into my breadboard. And uh, yeah, we'll just try manually driving this chip and seeing if everything works the way it should. Uh, next shot should probably be testing if I can manage to find some headers. Witness my monstrosity. This is probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever built, just in terms of all of this nest of wires. This is the CPU side? No, this is the video side address bus, 14 bits of that. Then seven bits and seven bits, so another 14 bits of control for both the right and left side, the video and the CPU side. Another 14 bits for the uh, CPU address bus. Then there is the 16 bits for the CPU data bus. Um, which comes over here. I'll talk about that in a second. And there is also the 16 bits that comes from the uh, video side data bus, uh, which doesn't have a set of wires here because that is going through, of course, into our muck section that we built last time, uh, kind of by way of these 16 pins that we're using to shove information to the mucks before, but now are just kind of a waypoint. And of course, then uh, what, what mucks output is being selected, which group of four bits is this guy. And then finally the output from the mucks, the actual four bits that we're selecting come out through this cable. And uh, they're going into this uh, weird little bodge, which uh, is actually made out of, I love these things. Um, let me see if I can get this to focus up real quick. There we go. These are uh, resistor in line. You can see there's one right there. Uh, panel mount LEDs that I got at Radio Shack when they were closing. These things are awesome because you can just shove them into a circuit. You don't have to, you know, set up a resistor like I do down here to throw lights on the board and whatnot. So if I just want to debug stuff real quick, those are awesome and they look cool to put on a board. And they were super cheap at the time because Radio Shack was going out of business. As you can see, there are a ton of LEDs here. Um, that is... As you can see, that's the data bus for the CPU data that um, I'm going to send into the chip. So this will be simulating, you know, the CPU writing into video memory, setting some pixels and whatnot. And this, of course, obviously represents what is ultimately being sent to the VGA card or the VGA output um, going to the monitor. Ultimately, this is the pixel <laughs> I donked up, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, and maybe you will have noticed before, but there there is some donkage here. But anyway, so we've got... Uh, you know, as I was showing you, these are the address lines. Uh, they're just all tied together to ground right now because, you know, I just want to look at address zero. I don't care about moving through addresses right now. I just want to address some point in memory. And then we've got our control lines. So of course, on our uh, video side, we always want to be pulling pixels out of memory for this test. So uh, I'll just go over what the control lines are. You've got this busy line here, uh, which is tied to an LED. And that is, that just indicates to the CPU whether, you know, the memory is still working or not. The busy light goes off when uh, the chip is busy doing stuff so that the CPU can know to wait, which I think will work well with uh, the 68K chips that I am using here because I believe they have a uh, asynchronous data bus. Then you have uh, LB and UB, which are lower byte and upper byte. Uh, that just indicates for a read or for a write, um, do we want to read the upper byte or the lower byte? Eh, I'm just doing them both at the same time all the time. So those are tied low, they're active low signals. Uh, then there's chip enable, 
I'm just having chip enable always enabled uh, because I always want to be reading from this side of the chip. Um, there's the semaphore line, which uh, this chip has a cool feature that I will never use where it can do kind of, it has the hardware for, uh, well, semaphores, but what that means is that you can kind of in hardware implement like uh, mutex locks and stuff. We have read write, which is currently uh, tied um, high, again, active low signals, all of these. Um, and when you bring it low, that means I would like to write into memory. Um, we're not writing on the video side, we're just reading. So skipping that one. Then output enable, which is tied low, it's active low, so that means we're always enabling the output on the video side, again, so that we'll always reflect uh, whatever is at this address at all times. We'll just keep reading it constantly. Then we've got the input from the CPU, all the same signals, um, but right now I've got them tied slightly differently. So the idea here is we're gonna turn this on this will always display for whatever position in the 16 bits is uh, selected by, you know, these little jumper wires. This is kind of the input side, so we will use these 16 wires to control, and then hopefully these LEDs will be visible. Uh, we'll be writing those into memory, and as soon as we write, that should update the output, because we're looking at the same address, but on two different sides of the chip, which is like the crux of getting, you know, video and CPU accessing the video card at the same time without, you know, huge bus conflicts, because they have completely separate buses via this chip. I'm just going to give it a shot. Let's turn the power on. I'm just gonna like put a, a counting uh, pattern in here. Maybe I'll just do like a, you know, uh, first light on for the first group, second light on for the second group, and so on. And uh, we'll just show that the multiplexing works as it's coming from the chip, that writing to the chip is working okay. You know, we'll make sure it's working. And that's pretty much essentially it. Okay, so again, lights off so you can maybe see that a little better, maybe. Uh, and this one has the first light on, this one has the second light on, this one has the third light on, this one has the fourth. So all I should need to do is clock right again. Let's turn pixel one on. Hey, look at that, that's one. Pixel two should be the next one. Yup, that's the next one. Pixel three, the third one, and pixel four. So that looks like everything is wired up right. Um, writing to one side and getting the data out of the other side is working as expected. So that's a really good next step. And uh, if I change these values up, so let's just, uh, I'll turn the high one on as well. There we go, turned on that high pixel. And let's do another right. There, did you see that? That changed right away. So that's how we can write on one side and immediately, even if they were at the same address, the uh, video hardware and the CPU, uh, completely asynchronously, if this was reading that pixel, it would change at the time that it's written um, so that, you know, there's no contention. Okay, so two notes about this. Um, firstly, I was saying I, I donked up a bit with the uh, four but, four but, four bit output, right? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how I did the math so bad for so long. Like I did it once and I like really thought it through and then I haven't looked at it again. Um, 64K for four bit color uh, does not work out for 640 by 480 resolution. It's just the numbers aren't there. Um, I could break it down to a lower resolution, but it would be lower than the resolution of the original Macintosh, which I mean, that's, you know, there's there are worse things, but uh, that's not what I was going for. So I can do it with uh, two bit color. So having four colors, um, I'll probably just muddle ahead with my four bits for now, since that's what I've done for the mucks, but I, I kind of screwed that up. So we may be doing more interesting things and, you know, overhauling the, uh, the uh, like output muxing stage again later. Um, and if we, if we do four bit color, then, you know, it might not be so bad. We'd have to play with it, but uh, to have four programmable colors, um, it, it'd be a little involved, but not so bad as doing 256 colors, which was, uh, well, you remember that being my original thing early on in this card, is that it would be cool to do 256 at a low low resolution, but um, yeah, I guess, you know, we could try a palleted mode with fewer pixels, but I don't know what I'm doing. So there's, there's one of my first big donks. Um, second, I just, I thought it was really great that uh, Ben Eater this week 
did his uh, video card attachment to his 6502 computer thing. Um, and for a second, uh, you know, I think he's the best. He's way better than I will ever be at this stuff. Um, and I just think he's the coolest, which is why I'm talking about him at all. But uh, he started talking about dual port SRAM in his last video. And I went, oh, Ben, oh, Ben, you son of a bitch. You better not do my exact setup here. Um, <laughs> Cause you know, I'm fighting for attention with Ben Eater. Uh, but it was just weird timing. I mean, I guess things, you know, there's so many people doing so many things, things must line up, but I thought that was wonderful. Anyhow, so my next steps, right? Um, I guess I have to put another memory chip in there, but that's, that's boring as all hell because it's just all the wiring you saw this time, the same over again. Um, that wouldn't really work great for a new video. So I'll probably do that off screen. Um, and then next time, I guess, uh, I'll start working on CPLD stuff. So that might be, you know, just to give me time to solder the chip in between like my real life and other stuff. Um, might, might wait a little bit longer on the next segment of the video. Uh, but then we'll, we'll get the, the video side driver CPLD in and, uh, you know, maybe actually start blasting pixels to the screen next time. Cause mostly all that you need for video output is just something that counts through addresses at the right speed. Um, and feeds those addresses to the, uh, some kind of RAM chip. And then, uh, you know, the RAM chip is spitting out the data to the monitor just by dint of the addresses changing. Um, so if we get that part working and I can show you my, my weird and janky CPLD, uh, tool chain and setup for that, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's what we'll do next time. So until then, uh, thanks again for hanging out with me, uh, spending time with me, um, going down these weird experimental roads of uh, putting up a jillion freaking wires in to drive one chip um, and not even, you know, the, the, we really just have a RAM connected to a MUX right now. And uh, yet, yet all this. So yeah, I'll see you next time. Um, thanks for tuning in. Bye.